Welcome to the Love Your Life Podcast. My name is Stephanie. I'm a health and life coach, fitness enthusiast, entrepreneur, and a triathlete's wife. I am here to share my tips to help you create harmony on all aspects of your life, health, career, spirituality, relationships, and personal development. Every week, you will be inspired to create a life you love and deserve. guys so the fall is here and I thought this would be a perfect time to talk about boosting your immune system before the weather really takes a turn I don't know about you guys but where you guys live but definitely in Michigan we get some pretty crazy weather where one day it could be in the 80s and the next day in the 50s or in the 50s and in the 30s we even get these nasty negative degree weathers as cold as like negative 14 and 20 degrees so if you live in a warmer state whoo you're lucky <laughs> needless to say the colder months are approaching us fast which means that cold and flu season is very near so instead of reaching for the medicine cabinet to ward off the virus this year let's take a more natural approach these natural immune boosting tips that I'm going to share with you today will surely keep that stuffy nose, fever, and those achy muscles at bay this fall and winter. The first tip I have is bone broth. You want to warm up with a nice cup of soup made out of bone broth. I still really, really very much crave my mom's homemade chicken noodle soup every time I get sick, and it's for very good reasons. Bone broth has amino acids called glutamine in it. This helps your white blood cells and your muscles to recuperate and nourish the entire body. You can incorporate bone broth in soups, stews, and standalone warm beverages in the place of oil while cooking. So you probably have seen these things on the shelves. Um, you can find them at many different stores or you can make them at home. Um, it's all up to you. Uh, a lot of people like to make their own bone broth. I know that about a cup, depending on which kind you're getting, it's about 10 grams of protein and it's full of nice healthy fats. So you can definitely have that as a meal replacement. It warms you up and it has a lot of great properties in it. Another one that I love and highly recommend every single person I know, whether you are sick, you're recovering from something, I have a friend who um, is recently recovering from a surgery around the abdominal area and has been on a lot of antibiotics. My husband has been dealing with some gut issues recently. Um, and even last year when he was battling a very, very bad fever, I mean, it pretty much knocked him out for a couple of days. And I slept in the other room because I was like, I cannot afford to be sick. Do you understand? I teach classes. I cannot afford to be sick. I had made sure that I took this one thing, which is probiotics. You might want to invest in a really good probiotic. If you um, don't have one, I highly suggest ProBio5 from Plexus. I will leave the link in the description box below. That is one of my favorite ones. It has five strands of, um, of probiotics in it. And it also has an antifungal to kill the um, candida yeast that is in your gut. I love this. It's also fast frozen. Um, the biggest reason why I like this type of a probiotic over other ones is the ones that you get that are refrigerated. Think about this. A couple things that you have to kind of ponder about. So the manufacturer makes it and then it ships it to the store. And then from the store, you got to take it home. Now, if it has to be refrigerated, how many of those live cultures have pretty much diminished or died off on the way of it shipping it to the store and then taking it from the store to your home? Let alone traveling with it. Like, think about you having to travel. You have to keep it cold all the time. Or another way of looking at it is that if it has to stay at a certain temperature, right? It has to stay chilled. How is it going to work when you digest it and it has to go all the way through your warmed up body? To your large intestine which is where you really want to have it activated so 
Back to probiotics. Um, the reason why I like it is because I really believe strongly in good gut health. You might have heard the term that your gut is your second brain. And I'm a very strong believer that the gut has a lot of key components into it that will help your overall health. Everything stems from the gut. When we get sick, we need all of these things firing on all cylinders. Did you know that serotonin is actually produced in the gut? Yeah, so your mood, if you're like in a crappy mood, it's probably because you got crap in your gut. <laughs> um, probiotics boost your immune system, and a good probiotic and fermented foods like kombucha, which is one of my personal favorites. I just recently did a kombucha workshop. Um, along with kefir, pickles, kimchi, miso, and sauerkraut. All these amazing fermented foods are really packed full of probiotics. Probiotics are good bacteria that help you digest the nutrients from the food that you consume and boost your detoxification of your colon to help support that immune system. So your broccoli, oranges, and Brussels sprouts that you are eating every single day can get fully digested and you can absorb all of the vitamins and nutrients in there and get the full benefits of everything that you are eating in your meals. It also helps prevent bloat, gas, and other GI issues. So if you're one of those people that has a hard time eating certain types of things, this might help along with a digestive enzyme. Um, a lot, so if you are on any antibiotics, back to like when my friend who recently had a procedure done and I recommended that he take probiotics. If you are on an antibiotic, antibiotics kill off all the bacteria in your system, even the good ones. So although like you really want to just make sure that you are getting that probiotic to build up that good um, gut health. And although you might not be personally prescribed a probiotic, like my friend might be, um, or antibiotic, sorry, as my friend might be, antibiotics can still get into your system due to the food that we consume. So if the animal that you are consuming is given antibiotics, then you are also digesting or ingesting them. That's why you're starting to see a lot of different companies that will say like antibiotic free. You want to make sure that the meat that you're consuming, whether it's beef, chicken, whatever it may be, pork, it is antibiotic free because if that animal, that pig was um, given a shot of antibiotics, you're getting a small portion of that too. All right, so on to another one of my favorites. This is an awesome one because my business partner, my recent business partner, if you have not known, I partnered up with my good friend. Julie Evans McNulty, and she is my gut health expert. Um, she makes this amazing stuff, these next two things, um, and she introduced me to them. The first one is elderberry. Elderberry syrup, syrup is, like I said, one of my new favorite things to put in my immune boosting like arsenal. Hippocrates, grandfather of medicine, used elderberry to boost the immune system. Elderberry is um, a ride has a right array of like health benefits, including fighting the cold, flu, allergies, and inflammation. The berry has antioxidants and it's an anti-inflammatory properties, which is really great if you have a sinus infection, which is when the nasal passage is all inflamed, like all of that pressure in there. Yeah, elderberry would be great for that. I came across this thing, like I said earlier, because of my business partner, and I love it. She sent me this care package. This is around the same time that Miles Wren had that like three day um, cold and flu like symptoms with the high fever. It was amazing. Like I took the stuff and I recovered from a recent cold in like three days. Like seriously, took it on Friday. By Monday, I was feeling 100% better. It was great. So I definitely swear by this stuff. Um, another one is collateral silver. Colorado silver, I think is how you say it. This stuff has been around for a very long time and it's not new um, to the world, but it's really great and new to what I have in my cabinet. Historically, silver has been used to stop the spread of disease in the form of an antimicrobial agent. This stuff can be used in a variety of ways. Like I looked it up, I was like, whoa. Um, the main one is to boost your immune system. Simply take it under your tongue for absorption into your system. So you want to put like a few drops in 
check out the actual um, portion size. So put a few drops underneath your tongue, let it sit there for about 30 seconds, and then swallow. Um, you can also put this directly on your skin to heal wounds, infections, acne, and a whole lot more. Finally, you can use this to nebulize it into your lungs for lung infections. So if you want a natural way to fight off any infection, either internally or tropically, you would want to to grab this stuff and you can actually order both of these last two the elderberry and the silver by going over to our website at www.fitnesswellnesslife.com in the store section i just added it there and you can purchase it and julie will send them out she has it as a combo packet that you can order right then in there so check out our website and order this amazing kit it will be in your house like within like three to five days super um, quick shipping She's such a doll. You definitely want to support this amazing woman. Another one is homemade cough syrup. So don't go to the counter and grab like your Robitussin or any of these other cough syrups that are just ugh, made with a whole bunch of sugar and not really that great for you. Try a homemade one. As you can tell, I'm like very anti buying anything over the counter. If I can avoid it, I try to stay away from modern modern medications and do my own naturopathic thing so this is one of the things that i absolutely like so when the other options the elderberry and the silver, the collateral silver are not enough i make this delicious homemade cough syrup which is made with local honey cinnamon and turmeric the key is the local honey this is because the bees pollinate the flowers near and around your home so you pretty much are ingesting the local honey and exposing yourself to the allergens and building up those antibodies to fight against them. You probably have heard of um, doctors doing this similar kind of technique where they expose children to a lot of the allergies, the food allergies to build up the immunity against them. Cinnamon is also really great for colds and turmeric is great for the immune system and digestive system. So when you mix all three of these together, you have one powerful natural cold and cough syrup. I will leave the recipe below, but I'll pretty much just tell you the um, portions of it is one tablespoon of honey, a half tablespoon of um, cinnamon, and one quarter tablespoon of turmeric. You combine them all together into a paste. I usually put it in like a little bit of a bowl, and then you can have it by the spoonful, or you can have it in this tea that I'm about to talk about next. Next thing I like to do is make my skinny spice tea. And I make this by like the pot full because <laughs> it is great. And I know, yeah, the name sounds a little bit strange when I'm sitting here talking about the immune system, but it does an amazing job at reducing inflammation, which helps you heal faster and reduces bloat. So you have a nice little bonus of boosting your immune system along with reducing a little bit of weight. I created this tea to help crave off sugar cravings and reduce inflammation after a workout when I then I started to notice that when I made some for my mom her arthritis and swelling went down and then I quickly started finding that when I was drinking this I was recovering from infections so what is this magical tea that I'm talking about made out of well it is made out of spices yes tons of amazing spices such as cinnamon cloves ginger cardamom turmeric and star of anise this simple tea that packs a powerful punch is both antibacterial and anti-inflammatory best of all the warming drink is delicious and there's no need for sweetener but feel free to Add a little bit of that homemade carb syrup. If you don't want to douse that carb syrup as an actual syrup, you can add it to this tea. I will also leave the recipe for the tea below, but I'll quickly tell you what it's about. I usually make one quart of water with one stick of cinnamon, one tablespoon of ground turmeric, or you can get the turmeric root and grate it up yourself. Two slices of fresh ginger, or feel free to grate those up too if you like one tablespoon of cloves, one tablespoon of cardamom pods. You want to smush them so they open up. So like get something to kind of crack them open a little bit and two star of anise. It is delicious. And the best thing about it, no caffeine. So you could take it both morning, midday and night, anytime of the day. It works out great and your kids can have it too. 
So another thing that I have in my arsenal, <laughs> like I have a pretty big uh, immune boosting arsenal. If you have not already realized a pretty big cabinet is essential oils. I absolutely love essential oils. And since switching from fragrance sprays and plugins, I noticed that I am a lot more sensitive to fragrances. Like I switched over a lot of my stuff to natural. I use natural laundry detergent. I don't use any of those like um, fabric fresheners or the room sprays or anything like that. And boy, when I do smell one or even like have um, soap that is fragrance, I'm like, oh, this is disgusting. It's making me nauseous. The top two ways to use essential oils are diffusing them or using them topically. If you are using them topically, you want to di dilute most of the oil with a carrier oil such as coconut or almond oil. Any of those kind of fractionated oils will work. The following essential oils are proven to help boost your immune system. Myrrh. Myrrh is a resin that you've probably heard of before. It has been around for quite a while. It has been historically used to treat hay fever, heal wounds, and stop bleeding. You might have heard of this one and the next one from the Three Wise Men. And it's for very good reasons because it strengthens the immune system and is antibacterial, antifungal, and is also an antiseptic. When you combine this with fragrances, another thing that you might have heard from a gift of the Three Wise Men, it enhances the antimicrobial properties. This one is great. Some of the other ones that you might want to have is oregano oil. You probably have that one friend around who is like, oh my gosh, you have to take oregano oil when you're sick. And that is because it is known for its immune boosting properties. It helps fight off infection. It's antifungal, antiviral, antiparasite, and antibacterial compounds. People also really, really like a lot of the mints, such as like eucalyptus is a really great one. Um, spearmint, peppermint are all really, really good ones to have to really help open up those passageways. I like to take like a lot of my mints, um, even a eucalyptus and the peppermint, put a little bit of carrier oil and put it at the bottom of my feet when I'm feeling sick. It just helps out a lot. You can diffuse those things. It really helps with opening up those passageways. And then you probably heard of, and there's so many of them out there, but um, You've probably heard of some of the other oils, the mixtures that have like the, the, the clove and the cinnamon bark that are out there. Um, I'm trying to think of what are some of the names. Like Fighting Five or Thieves. Those are really great oils to have too. So I hope that you um, try some of these remedies. Let me know which one should work for you, whether it's the essential oils, the tea, the cough syrup, the elderberry. Like I said before, you can buy the elderberry. Also, my probiotic um, and the um, collateral silver all on our website. You can find more information on that. But I will leave the information also in the show notes so that you don't have to like dig around on the website to find all of these things. Um, if you are in the local area, in the Metro Detroit area, come by next Wednesday, which will be on, I should probably know that, which will be on the 26th. Um, come by, first of all, for my Pilates class, my Pilates style class, which is triple threat. Um, that will be from 6 until 7. And then from 7 into 9, I'm having a friend coming by who is going to talk about immune boosting essential oils. And so that workshop is just $20 and you can get either two roller balls or one of those really awesome essential oil diffuser bracelets that you can make. And you can check out all of the amazing oils that you should have in your arsenal. Not just the ones that I listed off like myrrh and frankincense and oregano oil but a lot more that you might want to grab a hold of before the cold and flu season catches in. Again, that is next Wednesday on the 26th from 7 into 9. You can find out that information by looking at the link in the show notes. I'll leave the Eventbrite link below um, and come on out. I would love to meet you, especially if you are in this area. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode. Bye for now.
Thank you for tuning in to the Love Your Life podcast. All information and links for this podcast can be found in the show notes. If you like this episode and want to continue the conversation, you can email me at info at fitnesswellnesslife.com. And for more information to living a life you love, follow me on Instagram at FWL underscore Steph and on Facebook at Fitness Wellness Life. As always, you can schedule a free 30-minute call with me by going to www.fitnesswellnesslife.com. Thanks again, and don't forget to tune in next week for another inspiring episode.